All right. We also need to talk about quadratic like equations from P3. Looking at problem 40 on page 31. And this in no way looks quadratic because, you know, where are the x squareds? Where are the x's? I've got these weird fifth powers. This is really ugly. But it turns out all it needs is a new look. What's difficult about quadratic like equations is trying to find out what to substitute for. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull u out of thin air. We're going to say let u be defined as x to the one-fifth. Well, to be quadratic, we can only deal with u and u squared and numbers. So if u is x to the one-fifth, then u squared is x to the one-fifth squared. And if you remember your rules of exponents, this means we multiply one-fifth times two. And two one-fifths give me two-fifths. So let's see if we can rewrite this equation with just u's now. So our first step has been substitute. And if we substitute, let's see, x to the two-fifths, how can I replace that with something involving u? Well, this, x to the two-fifths is u squared. So instead of x to the two-fifths, I only want to write stuff down that involves u's. Next thing, plus, that can be copied down, no problem. x to the one-fifth, I don't want to write x's. These are ugly. I want to write u's instead. But x to the one-fifth is u. So instead of x to the one-fifth, I can just write u. And then I have minus 3 equals 0. Now that's, that is quadratic. I've got u squareds, I've got u's, I've got numbers, and that's it. This is quadratic. So this should be relatively simple, or at least simpler than this, so relatively simple, to solve. Well, if you try to work this one out, I think you're going to find that... Did I write this down right? Uh, no, no I didn't. That's why. I'm sorry. I miscopied this problem. That 3 should be a 2. It'd be mean to have you do quadratic formula on this. This should factor. And with 3, it won't factor. But written the way it is in the book, with a 2 there, it will factor. So our A is 1. Our C is minus 2. And we need to add to get B, to get 1. So the numbers we can work with are the factors of 1 times minus 2, or the factors of minus 2. So the factors of minus 2 are plus and minus 1 and plus and minus 2. So if we picked something like plus 2 and minus 1, two plus minus one is one, so that works. And two times minus one is minus two. The same thing you get multiplying across. So this should work out. We can now factor by grouping. We have one u squared 
plus 2u minus 1u, or minus u, minus 2. So I'm reading this off as 1u squared plus 2u minus u minus 2. So the order in which I'm reading them off is first, second, third, fourth. In this kind of zigzag pattern. That's my first coefficient. My second coefficient, 2. My third coefficient, minus 1. And my last coefficient, minus 2. Sorry about that. I, I'm just trying this method and teaching it for the first time, so that was definitely one screw up. I didn't tell you how to read this thing. In any case, ignoring that screw up, what's in common with the first two? What's in common with the last two? In the first two, I have u in common. So it's u plus 2. In the next two terms, both have a negative. So what if I pull out a negative or a negative 1? That'll leave me with just u, because minus 1 times u is minus u, and minus 1 times a plus 2 will be minus 2. Excellent. What's in between parentheses is exactly the same. This is the same as this. So I can factor it out, and I'll be left with u minus 1 equals 0. Oh, and I forgot to mention that once you do the substitution and get a quadratic, you solve the quadratic. So, we factored, factored by grouping. Now we're going to set each of the factors equal to 0, u plus 2 equal to 0, and then u minus 1 equal to 0. So this is the first number. That could be 0. Or we could have the second number, u minus 1, be 0. And that's the only way these two numbers could multiply together to be 0. So this means that u has to be minus 2, or u has to be 1. And it's very tempting to say, ah, I'm done. But the problem never asked us about u's. We were asked to solve for x's, not u's. We pulled u's out of thin air. So we've got to go back to x's. In a sense, the u's were just a convenient way to give this thing a new look to make it look like something we can solve. And in this new look, we were able to solve it. But now we need to go back and answer the original question. So our third step is to substitute back. So remember that we had u being x to the one-fifth. Or, if you will, the fifth root of x. So, substitute back right here at the simplest point. So we have the fifth root of x being equal to minus 2 or the fifth root of x being equal to 1. Well, to get rid of a fifth root, you raise both sides to the fifth power. And we do that in both equations. So the fifth root of something to the fifth is just going to get rid of all these fifths. It's just going to leave us with what's inside, with x. 
minus 2 to the fifth, if you have trouble with that, you know, put it in your calculator, but it's going to end up being minus 32, and 1 to any power is just 1. So our answer is x equals minus 32 or x equals 1. But the trouble is, is that in certain cases, we can get into trouble and we can introduce answers this way, which aren't actually answers to the original problem. So we have to check our answers. Well, let's look at x to the one fifth. What is x to the one-fifth when x equals minus 32. Remember, this is the fifth root of x. So, if x is minus 32, then the fifth root is going to be minus 2. You could also type that into your calculator as minus 32 caret parentheses 1 slash 5. This needs to be in parentheses because you're raising negative 32 to the one-fifth power. It's not 35 to the one-fifth power and then negate it. You're taking all of that to the one-fifth power. And then this needs to be in parentheses because exponents will come first. And if you don't have this in parentheses, it'll just be minus 32 to the first, then divide by 5. And that's not what you want. So x to the 1 fifth is minus 2. x to the 2 fifths is just, as we saw before, this was just u squared. Remember, this was u. u squared was x to the 2 fifths. So that's just going to be, if u is minus 2, u squared is going to be minus 2 squared. So it's going to be 4. So with x to the 2 fifths being 4, our original equation of x to the 2 fifths plus x to the 1 fifth minus 2 becomes 4, because that's x to the 2 fifths, plus x to the 1 fifth is minus 2, and then minus 2. Well, 4 minus 2 minus 2 is 0. That's exactly what we want it to be. And then if we check the case when x equals 1. Well, if x equals 1, then x to the 1 fifth, or what we called u, would just be 1 to the 1 fifth, or the fifth root of 1. And 1 to any power is just 1. Then x to the 2 fifths, which we called u squared, is just going to end up being 1 squared, which is also 1. So our equation will be 1 x to the 2 fifths plus x to the 1 fifth, which in this case is 1, then minus 2. And 1 plus 1 is 2, so this is going to end up being 0. So in this case, there was really nothing to worry about. Both solutions were absolutely correct. But, unfortunately, you do have to go through this process of checking because it's possible you could end up with a problem that does have what we call extraneous solutions, where you come down to a solution, or what looks like a solution, but doesn't end up being a solution to the original problem.